Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, before I jump into uh, why we've started this project, let me give you a, a brief background of uh, uh, what kind of company we are and uh, why we actually started this uh, project, and then a bit more deeper dive into uh, blockchain healthcare ecosystem, and then I'll wrap up with the kind of products that we are building right now. So basically, I'm Aditya. I'm actually a founder of Medifact, but before this, I've been working 15 years in clinical research industry. Uh, medical affairs, and then uh, we've also worked in new product launches in the pharmaceutical space. And then uh, we also parallelly ran a, a IT blockchain company, and together with this uh, a blockchain uh, IT company and healthcare, we decided we would do something in uh, healthcare space because uh, we focus mostly on the uh, B2B space right now, and then we wanted to move more on to B2C in healthcare where, you know, we provide something uh, back to the patients. That's where we started the project. So I'll jump into a basic uh, idea of uh, healthcare industry. So, yeah, we, we saw that there are huge uh, uh, data management issues in healthcare. It's not interoperable, and then uh, it's not secured. We have seen that... Uh, security challenges are one of the biggest things, and the way we collect the data has been the uh, biggest challenges in, in the healthcare industry. So we thought we'll start with something on how we collect the data from the patients, and then also incentivize the patients for actually collecting the quality data. And then also, uh, we see that there is a lack of uh, transparency in that industry, and then we also see there is uh, a lack of incentivization in the patient space. So we, that's where uh, we actually saw these are the biggest challenges, is the trust, transparency, and affordability of healthcare. So that's when we actually uh, you know, thought, okay, we would come up with some solution where we could incentivize the patients um, and then actually work in a win-win situation both for the sponsor, uh, that is uh, hospitals or pharmaceutical companies at the same time to the patients. Uh, Moving again, yeah, this is the need. You see like, there's a lot of uh, doctor shortage everywhere, healthcare provider shortage. We also see there's a manpower shortage. And then we see that there is a need for this uh, remote patient monitoring. I think you have seen that during the COVID time, uh, the care was not actually reaching a lot of people. So that's where we actually thought coming up with something where we remotely manage these patients is very important uh, uh, to actually start this project. And then, yeah, that's what uh, I was saying, that many, we still rely on a lot of legacy systems, which is controlled, which is very decentralized. The patient uh, data is not being shared with the patients. Uh, it's not really, um, you know, affordable. The, the cost of acquisition, acquiring the data is very high. Uh, and then we also see there is a lack of patient trust as well as uh, uh, a lot of technology uh, issues as well. So that's why we thought blockchain must be introduced in this space and see how we can actually provide a, a solution for this. Um, this is the general market size that we are targeting right now. I think um, uh, we see the telemedicine market, interoperability market, and also the cost. Uh, we see a huge market in this space. And then right now, uh, since being in the healthcare industry, uh, we are uh, we are focusing on mostly on the B2B space right now because the uh, access to the B2C data is very highly regulated, and then I'll come to that later. But we see that you know the data operability has a. This is only the blockchain healthcare market opportunity, and we as a company are focusing on the clinical cores and population health research and then medical data exchange. These are the two areas that we are focusing right now, but I think in the future we have already seen uh, remote auditing space and supply chain space as well, which is actually we want to focus going forward based on the industry partnerships that we have, and then uh, maybe uh, we'll see how we can act, because we are mostly operated right now in Asia-Pacific markets, and then we recently went uh, started operating in U.S. markets, uh, we see that there is also a requirement uh, that we see in the claims and uh, request management as well. Yeah, so I'll come to our solutions later. This is, we are now working on a clinical decision-making system, and we are also working on the incentivization, and also working on the uh, interoperability between different blockchains. Um, initially, we started with a, a layer one project. Uh, we wanted to uh, build our own layer one, and then 
uh, we initially started building on Hyperledger first, and then we saw there are uh, very difficult to incentivize the patients on Hyperledger, very difficult to work on the um, you know uh, Hyperledger, and then we slowly started our own platform, which is a layer one project. Then we face challenges on layer one projects as well because bringing on new uh, users onto layer one platforms is very challenging. So we decided that we will stick on layer three part, which where we actually build applications for patient data collection, we'll build application for the AI systems, and then slowly we'll actually build system on a lot of uh, layer one projects which are interconnected so that we can actually bring in more uh, people on the B2C level, because right now we are more focused on uh, working with pharmaceutical companies or hospitals or insurance providers, but in future we, we plan to move uh, where we could actually build our uh, ecosystem on other layer one projects and make sure that we have those uh, direct-to-user uh, kind of an interaction with uh, going forward. So, yeah, these are, I'll, 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 this is one of the projects that we are working. This is still on the B2B model where we are working with few hospitals, and then this project is a kind of a, uh, clinical trial that's working on. Uh, basically, this is a completely controlled environment. We are um, working on a private chain, and then we collect uh, data from a lot of uh, remote devices, which are like a respiratory device or a, a temperature device or something like that. And then we collect the data, and then we put it on a blockchain, and then um, we incentivize the patient. Right now, it's completely centralized incentivization, where we actually, uh, uh, based on the research results and based on the amount of that data that we actually take from the patients, we directly get the rewards from the uh, insurance companies or the hospitals or the pharma companies, and then we transact, do a transaction on, on chain, but it's uh, not for the data exactly they give. But we have one more concept of incentivization where depending on the type of data they give, uh, let's say uh, if they give a, a respiratory data, if they give a blood sugar data or you know a glucose level data, depending on the weightage of the data they have, we have created something called proof of sharing where depending on the amount of data that they continuously share onto the blockchain will be incentivized uh, to actually create a transaction and be rewarded. So these are two ways in which we are incentivizing. One is on-chain directly, which is on a private environment uh, controlled by the hospitals and pharma, and the other is uh, completely through a transaction uh, that's happening to the data. And then uh, we saw a lot of challenges in actually uh, putting a lot of uh, electronic health record data onto the blockchain, so we decided we would go more of a hybrid way, uh, where a lot of uh, imaging data or the videos that comes from a, a surgeries, they will actually go into a centralized system like IPFS, and then we also have a blockchain which stores the patient private data and then we are connecting that private patient private data through a private key, and then we are accessing this data, and then we are actually uh, publishing it to the um, other uh, sponsors or uh, pharma companies initially. So this is kind of hybrid structure that we are building. So this was very much easier when we initially started to build um, um, and then now we started to see a lot of challenges in how we store a lot of data. I think we need to uh, you know, come up with a new uh, layer one which is more interoperable and which is more uh, you know, uh, centralized uh, but you know, has more security like a decentralized system. So we are still working on that area where we look into other projects for partnerships. Also, a lot of data that comes into these kind of systems is not 100% validated because uh, you know, someone could be running their device, just leaving it alone, and then still you would be collecting this data. So we don't have something for validations like just like the uh, you know, earlier uh, discussion that you have with Chainlink, which validates a lot of data. So I think we are also trying to build uh, oracles for the healthcare space, where we actually try to validate most of the data that comes into this um, application. And then finally, we are also trying to like uh, you know work on different gamification for the patients here as well, and also incentivize them with the tokens on the uh, gaming platforms that we are building, specially designed for uh, healthcare um, uh, institutions, mostly 
solving the mental health issues when they are actually on the bed. There are still some kind of uh, gamifications that are built especially for these areas. We are not into gaming, uh, but we are actually working with some companies who are actually building those games to uh, improve the mental health of the patient. So all in all, uh, the focus is to improve the uh, patient experience, improve uh, the quality of life of the patient in terms of how we collect the data. We've never s told all our patients or the hospitals that we are building all this or putting all this into the blockchain because it would be too much of information for them. But in terms of regulatory aspects, uh, there are few things that we need to take care of when we collect the data over this chain. So let's say the, the electronic signatures, the consent forms from the patient, or the, the, HIP, uh, the data portability acts, we have to look into a lot of uh, challenges that we come through, uh, how we actually manage this data. So we are not really pushing hard on to, okay, we are a blockchain, everything is in the blockchain, so be secured. Uh, so we are not really pushing the technology part yet into the, um, the ecosystem that we are building, but we have obviously putting all the data and then we are making sure that we check box all the uh, regulatory aspects like security, the transparency and the, the HIPAA regulations and other regulations that comes in uh, in most of these countries. So this is how uh, I think we, we, we just started in this space. I think uh, we see a very good uh, uh, traction with the B2B space right now, but we are actually looking to move on to the B2C space, and then we, we kind of created something like a factor finance, which is mostly of uh, mostly like a crowd-based insurance platform where we usually uh, crowdfund the insurance, and then we actually, but this is also completely KYC done, so you have to identify yourself, you have to nominate some person, the risk premiums are calculated, decentralized way and then the way we distribute these tokens or where we distribute this insurance is completely decentralized. So that's, that's where I think it differs from the uh, normal insurance companies. On the back end, we are still using some insurance companies to actually run these uh, uh, products. So, so most of these projects, since they are new, we still have to rely on a lot of centralized systems on how we operate these products. And then slowly we aim to become 100% decentralized in, and then we hope it will move more into the uh, B2C space. Uh, this is the electronic health record that we have built. Uh, we slowly started to uh, identify companies which don't yet use uh, electronic health records, which are still using paper-based companies, small clinics. We started to make sure that without any um, issues, they actually directly come into the blockchain space, use the systems like the traditional systems, but their data is actually more secured on the blockchain space. So, so these are few of the projects that are running parallelly, but we are also building something called uh, for the, on the metaverse, which is on the, um, you know, virtual clinic space, where we integrate the electronic health records, we also integrate the, the insurance system, and then it's all happening on the virtual space. So that, that's, we, we plan to release that next year, which is completely on the metaverse space with the virtual clinic. Um, yeah, this is, I'll not go deeper into this, we have a lot of, uh, uh, regulation part, we have to take care of the, uh, you know, interoperability regulations, we have to take about all the other uh, healthcare regulations, so things are a bit slow compared to other, other, other uh, you know, healthcare projects or other things, but the challenge is we are uh, in healthcare space for 15 years and then we aim to be here for next 10 to 15 years, build more products, build more interoperability into the systems, and uh, we now are working with a lot of B2B partners and then we aim to uh, work with more partners there and actually getting uh, the data from different uh, providers and then also incentivize both the uh, um, hospitals as well as patients. We are working on a new uh, deep in infrastructure where we have IoT devices which directly push the data onto the blockchain. Uh, we, uh, we being in the healthcare space, I think it's, it, it gets easier for us to collect the data compared to other, other companies who are already in the market. So. Yeah, and then this is uh, kind of uh, different. I will just jump into uh, uh, what are the different revenue models that we are working. We mostly based on transaction fees and subscriptions uh, model. We have uh, a lot of provider network, supplier network. This is more of a B2B calculation, 
but I think uh, we are uh, getting there where we actually see there's a huge market uh, on the provider space and then a huge market on the B2B space as well. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I think uh, I'll stop it here, but if you want to have more information on any project that we are doing or any collaborations that we are looking for, and of course, we are a ma not a marketing company, we're a 100% technology health tech company, so we'll be open to, I'll be open to talk and take any advice on the crypto space or the blockchain space, and we are open for any collaborations. Uh, thank you very much.